Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we've got a new 2-in-1 from HP to check out today. This is the HP Elite Dragonfly Max. This is a 13-inch premium 2-in-1, so you can use it in display mode or make it into a tablet. It's pretty lightweight, nice and compact with a 13-inch display, but very expensive. We're going to take a closer look at what this laptop is all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from HP. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this one, as I mentioned, is steep. It starts at around $2,200 and goes up from there. The model that we're looking at is $2,700 as configured. Now inside this has the latest Tiger Lake processor and i7 1185G7 from Intel. We've got the 13.3 inch display that we're going to talk a little bit more about in a second, running at 1080p. You've got 16 gigabytes of RAM that is not upgradable, but it is in dual channel configuration for the best performance. And this model has a 512 gigabyte solid state drive that is upgradable. Additionally, you have Wi-Fi 6 on board with Bluetooth. That board is upgradable as well. And you have the option for 5G or 4G LTE. And there's a SIM card tray if you have that option configured on the side of the laptop so you can use it on mobile networks when you're not in the office. The build quality is very nice. It is magnesium, so it's got a very nice lightweight but rigid feel. It weighs about 2.49 pounds or 1.1 kilograms. Now this laptop has a privacy feature for its display called SureView. And what this does is that it darkens the display unless you're looking directly at it. Now you can turn it on and off, and I'll show you how it works here. So if I take the display slightly off center, you can see that although the image is darker, I can still see what's on the screen. And then if I enable the SureView feature here with the key press, you can see it gets much more difficult to look at unless I am directly in front of it. So if you're on a plane or in a train station or something, it's a lot harder for people to see your display if they're sitting next to you. And this is something you can toggle on or off. And as you can see, there is a brightness hit when it's enabled. Uh, this is a 1000 nit display, but I do think even with the SureView turned off, you're not getting the full brightness to your eyes because it does add another layer uh, to the display itself and that also impacts image quality. Things look a little softer to me than I would like on something like this. Uh, 1080p displays typically look really nice at this size, but this one doesn't have the sharpness that I've seen on other displays, and that added layer does make things look a little washed out. You also get some weird color effects here when you've got reflections on the screen. Now this is amplified a bit because we are under my studio lights, but I was noticing this coloring here even when I was upstairs in front of a window. Now I know there's definitely some utility to this privacy feature, but I don't think it's going to be something creative professionals will want configured on their laptop. It does have a nice webcam here. This is a 1440p uh, 5 megapixel camera here at the top, and I found the image quality to look pretty good even in lower light scenarios like you see here. So it's definitely a notch above some of the 720p webcams we have seen on other laptops, even at this price category. Although I think in the coming year, we're going to see everybody kind of upping the resolution on their webcams. So definitely a nice webcam here. You have a privacy shutter here that will turn the camera off and block its lens as well. So you don't need to put a piece of tape on there. Uh, so that was a nice addition to the mix. Now one note on the webcam is that even though it's running at this higher resolution, it only shoots at 30 frames per second max. There does not appear to be a 60 frames per second mode on it. It has a couple of other neat little features too because it can detect its orientation and how it's being used and adjust itself accordingly. Uh, so one example is that if you have the laptop on your lap, it recognizes that it's on a lap and will run slightly slower so that it doesn't get too hot on your lap. And then when you put it back on the desk, it will recognize it's in a desk scenario and up the performance to a level where heat isn't as big of an issue. Uh, the other thing it will do is detect when it goes into a bag. And if the computer is asleep when it goes in the bag, it'll actually go into hibernation mode. So it saves battery life while you're in transit. 
and then when it gets out of the bag and placed back down in a horizontal position here, it will resume from the hibernation mode into sleep mode. So you will get a little more battery life when you are uh, traveling with the laptop, which is kind of a neat little feature that they've integrated into this premium hardware. Now, battery life on this one is very good. If you're doing the basics like web browsing, word processing, Excel, and that sort of thing, and you keep the brightness down, I think you can get about 11 to 12 hours out of it. We were seeing that in our testing. You might be able to squeeze a little bit more out of it depending on what you're doing. But if you are running, of course, more strenuous activities like games or photo or video editing, that will certainly impact the battery life more significantly. Now, I am very pleased with the keyboard and trackpad on this one. The keys are well-spaced. They've got great tactile feedback. They just feel good. They've got good travel on them. And the click pad is very responsive and has a nice solid click to it as well. You can even click as high as I am right here and still have those clicks registered. So it's a very nice input scenario here. The keyboard is backlit also. You have a fingerprint reader here in the lower right hand corner and you also have the ability to use Windows Hello through the camera. It does do face recognition too. So you've got some different ways in which to access the system without a password. The speakers are upward firing. They sound great. You get some bass out of them, not like a subwoofer level of bass, but it's really good for music and for conferencing. Uh, but like many two-in-ones, when you shift it into display mode here, those nice upward firing speakers become downward firing and don't sound nearly as good in this configuration as they do in this one. So if you are watching movies on it or something, you might want to connect headphones when you have it in that display mode or just leave it in standard laptop mode here. There are a number of ports on this one, which we'll take a look at here on the side. So you've got a USB-A port over here. This runs at five gigabits per second max. Your power button is here. You have a Kensington lock slot here, which is important for your very expensive laptop, so it can be locked down on the desk. Your SIM card goes in here if you configure your machine with that option. You also have two Thunderbolt 4 ports, and these also support USB 4, and these are full service ports that do video out along with power in and data in and out. You have a headphone microphone jack here and a full-size HDMI output over there but there is no card reader on this one due to its small size. I also found that although the laptop is very lightweight, there's a lot of uh, top heaviness to the display portion because it has that Gorilla Glass uh, on it as well as that privacy shield. So you will see it kind of lift the keyboard up with it when you lift it up here like so. It doesn't have kind of an even balance to it, but it feels very good to walk around with. And again, not all that heavy on a lap. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll begin, of course, with our usual basic tasks here, like web browsing, and we'll pull up the nasa.gov homepage. And as you can see, everything springs up very quickly here as expected. Uh, you've got a nice fast processor here along with uh, the Wi-Fi 6 radio, and I don't think you'll have any issues doing the basics. You shouldn't have any with the price point here. Uh, so altogether for doing the kinds of work I think this laptop is designed for, it will perform quite well at those tasks. A little bit earlier, we also checked out YouTube with one of my 1080p 60 videos. We didn't have any drop frames there. It was able to play back everything uh, perfectly. So I think if you're watching Twitch and Netflix and uh, Amazon Prime Video and all those other things, you should have a very good experience with this laptop, both for visuals and for audio. And on the browserbench.org speedometer web benchmark test, we got a score of 178. That is exactly where I would expect this laptop to land given the processor it has on board. So altogether, it's performing about where we expected it to, at least for doing the basics. Now you might be wondering about pen support on this one. Uh, it does support AES 2.0 pens, but there's no place to store the pen on the laptop, nor is it standard equipment. You can add a pen onto your order when you purchase one of these things, but it's not something that they've integrated into the design. Let's take a look now at how it performs with games. So here is Red Dead Redemption 2. We are running this at 720p at the lowest settings. This laptop, of course, has the new Tiger Lake chipset, which delivers really decent graphics performance without a discrete GPU. Uh, but we're only getting probably about 25 to 30 frames per second here. So it's not going to rival what you might get with a gaming laptop, 
but it is relatively playable, although a game like this is really pushing the limits. Uh, some other games, though, did run really nicely, including GTA 5. We were running this at 1080p at the lowest settings and getting around 40 frames per second, give or take, which is about where we typically see these Tiger Lake i7s come into play. This one's running just slightly slower than some of the other ones we've looked at that are a little bit larger and have better cooling, uh, but altogether a very playable experience. And of course, you can turn the settings down on this game to 720p and get a faster frame rate. And this is Fortnite running at 1080p at the lowest settings. We did have a little lag spike there, as you just saw, but generally it was running between 45 and 55 frames per second, so very playable. And of course, you could turn the resolution down to 720p and get slightly better performance. But I will say it's really awesome to see how AMD's pressure on Intel in the marketplace has led to some significant gains in graphical performance. And these gains are not just for gaming. Uh, you can also see better performance editing video and doing photo editing as well. So it's great to see that competition making things better for consumers. And the Tiger Lake performance out of this one is about where we've seen other machines in this form factor. And on the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,323. And while this machine performs well against a few other i7s we've looked at with similar processors, it is running a little behind a computer with the very same processor, the Yoga 9i from Lenovo, that's a little bit larger and has the ability to cool itself down a little bit better. But still, very good performance, as you saw, for doing the basics and for doing games. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 94.10%. That is not unusual for a computer in this form factor. So you will see some thermal throttling if you place the computer under heavy sustained load, but we didn't notice all that much in our testing with it. Uh, but just be aware that you will maybe see some performance degradation if you're really, really pushing it. Uh, the fan noise on here isn't bad, but it's definitely audible. However, it's not running that fan very frequently unless you're really placing the computer under load. When you first get it, it might be going through some updates in the background, so that will result in some fan noise in your early experience. But generally, it's been pretty silent throughout most of our testing, unless we're playing a game or something like that. All right, one last thing to take a look at before we close out, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up Ubuntu 21.04 just to see if it ran, and it did run, and it detected the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the video, the touchscreen, the audio. So it looks as though most of the hardware here is functioning as expected with non-Windows operating systems. So that was good to see. And overall, it's a nice computer. It's got a great warranty, by the way, three years, but it is priced significantly higher than many other computers that perform about the same and can be found in similar form factors. You do get some nice bells and whistles here, like the uh, high-res camera, the nice magnesium casing here. There are some things to like, but I'm not sure if those things justify the high price tag. But it does feel like a premium piece of hardware. It's very compact and portable, and that might be of value to some of you out there. That's gonna do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.